Fifty years ago in China, it was a time of famine. There was nothing left to eat. All food had been devoured, and the fields and mountains were stripped bare. People started to eat dirt, and even human flesh. One army granary held, held more than 10,000 tons of grain. The abundance of grain in the granary attracted mice. The mice threatened to devour the grain, and so the storehouse manager recruited a pest exterminator from a nearby village. This was Mr. Sheng. Maybe because there was so much food in the granary, Mr. Sheng stopped feeling hungry the moment he started work there. He simply didn't need to eat. If he ever felt the urge to eat something, just looking at it was enough to satisfy him. For Mr. Sheng, the sight of a piece of meat was tantamount to eating it. One glance at a steamed bun was equivalent to devouring it. Countless people were starving to death, but Mr. Sheng always gave the appearance of being well fed. Sometimes, when walking along the street, he even belched. You should know that in China during this age of famine, the sound of a single belch was like a revelation. Someone who belched frequently could easily be taken for a god. Mr. Sheng liked a girl called A Zhen. As a token of his devotion, he delivered his grain rations each month to A Zhen's father. As a result, A Zhen's family avoided starving. They made steamed buns and steamed plaited rolls, and often made a show of belching on the street. But they became greedy. Steamed buns and plaited rolls were not enough. They wanted to eat meat. But meat was rare in this time of famine, so Mr. Sheng gathered the bodies of the mice he had poisoned, peeled their skins, and stewed the meat. Every night, he delivered a potful to A Zhen's family. To win A Zhen's heart, Mr. Sheng worked hard at mastering the culinary arts, and quickly became a master of rodent cuisine. He could make all kinds of delicacies. Mice glazed in vinegar, broth of mouse, mouse stewed in soy sauce, steamed mice with rice batter. The more Arjen's family ate, the fatter they became, until all the mice in the granary were wiped out. One day, after searching for several hours, Mr. Sheng was able to find only one scrawny little mouse. He took this pathetic mouse to A Zhen's home, where he roasted it and shared it out. That meal wasn't enough to satisfy A Zhen's family, and they felt resentful. They cursed Mr. Sheng for being useless, and the more they did so, the more their anger grew. That night. Arjen's father went to the town and informed on Mr. Sheng to the authorities. Mr. Sheng was immediately arrested. The government decided that he had committed a crime. The crime they found him guilty of was theft of state property. During the trial, one official proclaimed righteously, "The mice in state-owned storehouses are state property." Mr. Sheng was handed a 20-year prison sentence. The prison authorities gave him the job of distributing food to the other prisoners because he never felt hungry, and was thus thought unlikely to steal food. By that time, the Great Famine was over. But although those outside had food to eat, the prisoners were kept hungry. Mr. Sheng performed his duties very well. And was quickly recognised as a model prisoner. Every year, the prison awarded him a special commendation, but would not agree to release him early because he was needed to keep the other prisoners in line. 
Mr. Sheng brought order to the prison and regularly lectured the prisoners. You have food to eat because of the kindness of the prison authorities, so you must be grateful. And the one who gives you food every day is none other than me, so you should show gratitude and respect me. After that, the other prisoners called him Brother Sheng and saluted when they saw him. After his 20 years were up, Mr. Sheng spent another 10 years in the prison. He opened a restaurant inside the prison and sourced rancid meat, rotten vegetables and mouldy rice from the outside. He employed all the culinary skills he had learned from cooking mice, making dishes which he forced the prisoners to buy. They called his cooking Mr. Sheng's gourmet foods. New batches of prisoners kept arriving and Sheng's business flourished. He made a lot of money and became an influential figure in the prison. Even the head warden had to defer to him. This situation continued until one day there was a prison riot. The prisoners demolished the walls of the prison and torched Mr. Sheng's restaurant. By this time, Mr. Sheng was old. Under the cover of darkness, he slipped quietly out of the prison. After that, he led the life of a homeless drifter for many years. He was filthy and smelly. He didn't need to beg for food because he never felt hungry. He often just sat by the roadside in a daze, thinking of his golden time, muttering the prison regulations to himself. Mr. Sheng was in a free world now, but all he knew were the prison rules. Mr. Sheng lived his life alone. He never married and never had children. Eventually, he was put into an old people's home where he spent his declining years. During one apoplectic fit, he fell on the toilet and hit his head and suddenly had a feeling he hadn't experienced in years. The hunger that had been suppressed for so long had returned. He started to eat non-stop. Basket after basket of stuffed buns, tray after tray of steamed bread. The more he ate, the hungrier he felt. Finally, the attendants in the old people's home became impatient and forced steamed buns down his throat, saying, eat, eat. Mr. Sheng didn't resist, he just gulped greedily. He ate all the food in the old people's home and then started to eat the tables, <laughs> the bedboards, even the cement and lime of the walls. The management was afraid he would eat the whole building and so they went out and bought cartloads of food for him. Mr. Sheng, unmoved by their efforts, continued to consume in vast quantities. He ate without resting or sleeping and his mouth became bigger and bigger while his limbs and body became increasingly atrophied. Finally, on a night when the snowflakes were dancing across the sky, just like the first time he had gone into the granary, Mr. Sheng reached with his withered claw for a steamed bun, but he couldn't bring it to his lips. He struggled and strained, but the bun fell to the ground. He stretched his neck with mouth wide open to bite it, but he couldn't reach it. He stuck out his tongue to lick it, but he couldn't reach it. He gnashed his teeth all night long, his eyes staring blankly. When the sky was nearly light, Mr. Sheng, who for most of his life had never been able to feel hunger, starved to death in a room full of food. <laughs>